<laughs> back again. So uh, again, we're still covering a little bit of work for the lower body anatomy and a little bit of function. <clears throat> so one of the things that comes up in our yoga practices a lot is hyperextension of the knees. It's typically when the knee um, moves farther back, uh, typically denotes some lack of, of good function, and it's often characterized by the, this outer edge of the knee going farther back than the, uh, than the middle portion of the hip and the ankle. That's usually what we're going to talk about is hyperextension. Hyperextension in and of itself doesn't cripple a person, and most often a person doesn't experience big tears or uh, anything like that in the knee, and it probably also doesn't destroy the knee um, like some anti-hyperextension folks uh, would, would kind of present. One of the things that hyperextension of the knee does relate to, though, is a dysfunction of the mechanics of the entire limb. So a person, uh, as they walk or run or even stand or sit well, uh, how they extend the spine out, um, especially everything not included the sit in the sitting, uh, is related to the function of the mechanics of the lower limbs. So when the knee hyperextends backwards, the mechanics of pressing down into the floor or the earth or whatever it is that you're doing, a lot of the energy that you press down with gets lost in the backward movement of the knee. And then because of that, the upward movement of energy uh, up through the leg, through the pelvis, and up through the spine is also diminished as well. And this can create, um, even if it doesn't create a really unhealthy knee, this can relate to some other bad mechanics. And, and if we take this and extrapolate it out very far, probably uh, adds to a person's diminished ability to do the axial extension of the spine that we've talked about in class. And it just diminishes how well a person stands upright and stays upright. If this were a track athlete and they bowed the knees back a lot, they would run slower than an equal athlete who didn't hyperextend a ton, and they would lose power as they do it. For just a regular person, that power that's lost for the sprinter is, uh, is equal to a power or the, the movement, the force, and the energy that a person uses to stay upright through the spinal column. So hyperextension of the knee is probably a really um, unbeneficial practice to participate in. And so if you can avoid it, great. So how do we avoid it? Um, the short of it is we use three major muscles in the back of the leg. And for today, this is going to be related to our knee stabilization um, from the back of the knee. Uh, up above, we have two of your hamstring bellies that we are going to use a lot. We have our biceps femoris towards the outside, and we have the semitendinosus um, that's towards the, the mid middle portion of this. And combined, they create these two downward kind of straps uh, where we have the tendons of the muscles that come down around part of the knee. And so those wrap down around part of the knee, and as those muscles engage, they would help pull the, the, the lower part of the leg up and back unless we change some of the mechanics, uh, which is part of a different lesson. Um, but for now, we would say to pull the heel up and back. Um, unfortunately, if we only engage that muscle and we don't do any engagement of the lower part of the limb, um, it's probably not going to help to prevent our hyperextension very well. And in some situations, you can make an argument that it might actually even make it worse. So we need a, a two-part system. And uh, let me light up another muscle on here. So we add into the hamstring bellies that come down, we add the large calf muscle, the gastrocnemius, and it comes up and it goes just inside the two straps, actually the, the lateral, the outer edge portion, um, it, it rounds up around the inner edge of the condyles, and then it attaches almost right underneath where these two bands come down. So the, the two areas, the up and down area, they kind of buckle right over each other. 
right at the back of the knee, and even more specifically, they're, they're big buckling across as a little bit to the femur side. When these work together very well, and in a good running stride or a power movement, uh, these will coordinate fairly well together. Um, especially if you were going to be doing like a, a really powerful stride, uh, they might coordinate very well to make sure that the knee doesn't lose energy extending back too far. These two act as a buckle, and if we're doing something like a standing yoga pose where we're trying to balance, if we were to only fire up the quadriceps or activate the quadriceps and press back to make the knee straight, uh, it's very easy in a yoga pose to not activate these muscles very well at all. And a lot of times we can balance and just kind of take on the premise of stacking the bones and not necessarily using the muscles. And then what will often happen is the large quadricep muscle, just slightly active, will press the knee back because there's nothing to kind of work to stabilize it. Uh, so none of the, the gastroc and none of the hamstring muscles. There's also the whole concept of our connective tissue bands that run up and down the back of the leg. And if we, if we take into account that, laxity here is also going to create a laxity here, even if the calf is awake. And the calf, if it were very active, along with the quadricep, um, could actually drive the knee back even farther. But the calf, with a softer tone in the quadricep, and a greater tone in the hamstring muscles, and the hamstring bellies, can create a wonderful uniform tone and prevent the knee from traveling back. This also sets up much better mechanics for how you press down into the ground and get that return energy coming back up. A little bit of quadricep tone is definitely necessary, but for most of us just doing a standing pose, there's not a lot of quadricep tone needed because the quadriceps are so massive compared to these muscle bellies. If we take this off the yoga mat, um, definitely the quadricep uh, for other activities develops even more. There's not a lot of quad development in yoga. And so this type of muscle balanced, balance to help prevent the knees from going back becomes huge and important. There is a little bit of other musculature in the back of the knee. Um, I don't know if you can see some of these small muscles. Actually, there's another one, the, uh, the popliteus, uh, that's not shown there. And these have a little bit to do with um, the knee flexion. Uh, knee flexion is when the knee bends this way, which is the, knee, the opposite of the hyperextension. So the action of doing a little bit of knee flexion during a phase of a, of a body position that would create hyperextension, um, that's actually the way that we'll resolve it. With smaller muscles, not such an issue here. So in short, make sure that your calves and your hamstrings are a little bit active to prevent the hyperextension on the yoga mat for better stability and alignment, but also to create a pattern of muscle activation and muscle usage so that we don't lose energy passing back through the knee. Yeah. All right, thank you very much.